Google moved their information security mindset over uh, to the Zero Trust uh, Forest Research uh, thought process a couple of years ago. And uh, it's a good concept to engage in because it, it, it demands redundancy, okay? Uh, it demands uh, a multi-layered defense against hackers and bad actors and, you know, employees engaging in stupid behavior that could lead to exploits that could compromise uh, our network, our systems, our data, okay? Um, so, uh, in the web filtering example we're going to talk about right now, uh, deploy our web filtering module at the endpoint device level. Okay, you still have your uh, IP reputation rules on the firewall, but you have an additional layer of security using our web filtering module. And we're going to talk about that right now. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set it up and the uh, feature sets behind it. First thing we do with everything is we want to create a management group. So we're going to do that right now. So in this pane right here, um, we would have uh, the if this was broken down by department, uh, some of these existing AD4 structure, we would have department groups, if you will. And it might just be a very simple matter, seeing that all the AD credentials would be in that group anyway. Uh, just uh, using the pre-existing groups to set up our policies. That's what we wanted to do. But if you don't have a specific group to your liking, no problem. Let's just create a group. So we'll call this um, Sales and Marketing Web Filter um, uh, Policy. We we'll call anything you want. And what we're simply going to do now is let me just refresh my screen here real quick, stand by. That is interesting. All right. Sales web filter. I know why it's telling you that. I was, I was in the wrong module. Look at that. <laughs> I thought to actually be in my, my test unit here. Okay, group management. There we go. That's the test drive unit. I can't populate any data in there. All right. So, all right. So getting back to what I was saying before, sales and marketing web filter. Perfect. Well, we have the group that we already created. Now let's add devices. Okay. So let's say everybody's uh, sitting at their same device all the time. They're not moving around. They were in a hospital, as an example, from device to device and logging in to different terminals. Just use the static model. So we're going to uh, put in, we're going to input devices in here based on NetBIOS address. We're just going to highlight that. Now we set up our user group here. Based on NetBIOS, we're going to go to recording and blocking. Well, as you saw, very easy to set up a custom monitoring group. So the group we put the devices in this case via NetBIOS into the group, and those devices are going now going to be monitored. We're going to go in here and make some changes to this group now. So here's where all the magic happens. So as you can see here, we have our options panel here. Okay, let's just double check. We have our devices in here that we want to monitor this web filtering policy. We're going to click off a whole bunch of stuff. We obviously want this toggle on to investigation mode. Don't worry, that's gray listed out because in the past, we learned from our mistakes, as most IT companies should. People were getting 30-day licenses of our software, uh, and we gave them a full investigation mode um, uh, license where uh, a pop-up window would not occur uh, on startup saying this device is being monitored. The problem is, is they would use the software for 30 days, monitor the people they wanted to monitor. Then we call them up and say, hey, uh, uh, how many licenses would you want? And they basically never call us back or say, well, you know, um, thank you very much. So we learned very early on that we need to pay for our product because that's what most businesses do. <laughs> so um, 
we're going to toggle off the recorded emails piece here. Uh, it's a message in the chat. It's going to be off. Keystrokes will be on. We're going to record the websites you go to, turn off the recorded programs, turn the documents network bandwidth. It might be helpful from a quality and service perspective. Okay? Uh, might be uh, helpful to us to augment that with information we're giving off the firewall. So we will keep that on. Cloud tracking off, login events off, block websites on, block programs off, our camera screenshots off, alert word screenshots uh, on. And I'll show you why that is in a second. So I'm going to set up a uh, very simple custom um, <clears throat> web filtering policy based on that. So we're just going to click save. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to go into blocking websites. So we're going to make some changes to this policy here. So here's our web filtering interface here. So as you can see, we have a uh, fully uh, uh, robust uh, IP reputation categorization tool. Uh, so each IP address is analyzed by a team of two analysts and updated many, many different times during the day. Um, obviously, we have categories to block adult websites. We have individual categories here. Uh, if you wanted to toggle off, God, God forbid, why you wouldn't want to uh, tag all those, especially in the corporate environment. Uh, obviously, all malicious websites, as I already denoted here, um, you have the ability to uh, offload uh, uh, the IP uh, blacklist uh, database off of your firewall. Uh, you have rules to do that. You can upload that database via CSV here. You can go to a website like this as an example and pull off banned IP addresses and then um, upload them to um, uh, the banned IP addresses here, as you can see, and check them off as an example. Uh, we can also uh, whitelist websites, which further uh, limits the, the diameter of the spout, if you will, and further creates a trickle-down effect of data. So uh, we can um, uh, block all websites except those in our allowed uh, IP address list. So you can set up the IP address. You could literally, if you wanted to, um, from a VPN perspective, uh, you know, uh, from a browser perspective, you could force them to go to the same IP address to log in. Uh, via VPN to do any corporate activity, which is, or, you know, again, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people need to log into the, the corporate servers via VPN, but they don't necessarily have to do that uh, um, unless they're going into the um, the main uh, share drive in order to get specific documents off there. Well, um, like I said, the problem here is that um, they can do the rest of their business during the day, whether they're going to Salesforce or going to other work-related websites. You can literally force everybody into the, into the same VPN using the um, same browser if you wanted to, okay, to eliminate that threat vector. It's up to you. There's some, a myriad of different ways and whitelisting techniques that could be executed with our product. Now, uh, we can also block by content. And we can select a, a category, uh, you know, information that you don't want somebody to be able to go to from a uh, web browsing perspective. We can block them from viewing websites with that information on it, as an example. From a, from a um, website perspective, we would be able to see all the websites they went to, just as a further iteration of the monitoring capability. So we set up the IP reputation. But again, um, those websites they do visit, we'll be able to see here, okay? type of activity we're talking about as an example. Okay, so that's very important. Additional web filtering information, IP reputation information we'll have to be able to sort through and uh, look at uh, at our discretion. That is our web filtering capability. So we saw a number of different things here. Very easy to set up of uh, policy groups, we set up an alert word, and uh, we showed you what our web filtering module does. 